This little guy right here is called the Trail Mix. It's a 100% open source fight stick by Granola Arcade. This is what they call a leverless controller, meaning that it's all buttons for movement and no stick. One of the most popular leverless controllers is called the Hitbox. Now with that popularity spawned a ton of leverless Hitbox style controllers out there. But what makes this one special besides its unique look? This controller is completely open source down to the PCB and even the firmware that's on it. That means with a little bit of knowledge about custom PCBs and single board computers, you can have exactly this at home. All right, so let's dive deeper into the hardware. It all starts with the core a custom PCB designed by the creator. You can see the Raspberry Pi chip here. That'll be relevant when we go over the firmware later. Here in the upper left are the extra buttons. Those are soldered onto the main board. They are your start, select, L3, R3 buttons. The main buttons are attached to the PCB with low profile red switches with 3D printed button caps on top. The PCB actually snaps into the 3D printed case here and what you see is the entire board. The PCB is actually cut this way. The shop offers a ton of different colors for the buttons, the case, and even down to the PCB. I went with the black PCB, yellow buttons, and purple case to represent my ECU pirates. Now let's talk a little bit about that custom firmware I mentioned. The Trail Mix didn't come out of nowhere like I mentioned before. It was birthed from the OpenStick community, a community dedicated to providing an open source solution for making high quality arcade controllers at a fraction of the cost than the big brands. One of the products of this community is the GP2040CE firmware, CE standing for Community Edition. It's a gamepad firmware for the Raspberry Pi Pico and other boards based on the RP2040 microcontrollers, the chip that we saw earlier that combines multi-platform capability, low latency, and a rich feature set to provide endless customization possibilities without sacrificing performance. The firmware supports X input, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One, D input, and keyboard formats. Now when I bought this, I did not know it was compatible with the Nintendo Switch, but I'm super hype about that because I'm gonna be playing the Street Fighter Collection and some Smash Bros on it. Now let me take a step back and tell you about how this whole thing started. This all started when I came across the GP2040 CE firmware project when I was looking up how to build an open source fight stick for my handheld gaming devices. Most of the price lists I came up with decent parts were around 100 bucks without a 3D printer. This controller sells at $60 USD, which is cheaper than any of the other controllers in its class and cheaper than anything that I could build as a DIY project. So I just bought this instead. But that still left me with a few questions I had for Granola Arcade. The first question being, how did this whole project start? After leaving his job in 2022, Granola delved into 3D printing and electronics building custom keyboards and ESP32 slash Pico projects. This exploration was influenced by several YouTube channels that he followed. The idea for the project, Trail Mix, was inspired by the Snackbox Micro and other similar projects. They noticed these were geared towards hobbyists requiring significant manual work. Seeing an opportunity, they aimed to simplify the design. Utilizing the low startup cost of PCB design and 3D printing, Granola iterated on those ideas, eventually creating the Trail Mix, a project that balances between a side job and full-time work. Now the next question I had was about his pricing strategy because every other fight stick that I saw similar to this on Etsy was at least $20 more expensive. And the reason the Trail Mix is priced lower than competitors is because of the deliberate design choices by Granola. Non-essential features like LEDs and hot swap sockets were removed, and the case was designed for efficient 3D printing and assembly. The PCB's design allows it to be snapped into the case without any additional tools. And of course, operating as a single person business keeps costs low as well. The next question was just what advice would you give to a beginner just getting into the open stick? community. For hobbyists, there are ample resources available, and one doesn't need to start with extensive knowledge of electronics, coding, or PCB design. Options range from building a hand-wired board with a Pi Pico for minimal costs, to designing a custom RP2040 board like Renola did for more advanced projects. Their key is to use inexpensive materials and free software to allow for risk-free experimentation. And for any challenges you may run into, and I know you will, Renola Arcades recommends joining the OpenStick Discord community. This project to me represents what open source is all about, a community of people with a common goal to create a framework for people to enjoy retail grade quality products at a fraction of the price. And then somebody may stumble upon that community that's really good at building keyboards. They build their first prototype, test, iterate, repeat over and over until you get something as beautiful as this. Peace.